Welcome back to X-Men Classics, episode 38. In this episode, we're going over issues 98 to 100 of Uncanny X-Men. First up, issue 100, which features the return of the Sentinels. Yep, the Sentinels are back. Today, the show opens up. Christmas time, despite the fact that this issue came out in, a in April of uh, whatever year this came out. I'm just checking this. Uh, I think it came out in 76. Yeah, April of 1976 came out. This bad fact is celebrating Christmas now. So the X Men just celebrating Christmas, having good good joy, and then the Sentinels show up. Yep, completely out of nowhere. Making the first parents in the X Men book since uh, uh, the awesome three party were from uh, X Men 57, 59. And first time they appeared in a comic book since um, Avengers 102 to 104. And they just go attacking the X-Men. And this lasts for a few pages. Yep. Yeah, Banshee knows what it is. It's a setup because it's taken on something else before. But the regular X-Men at this point have never taken on something else before. So yeah, all set no all mutants must be destroyed. I would not be destroyed, so she destroyed, so Storm destroyed the Sentinel. And of course, to make a reference to, oh, <laughs> this is funny. Uh, this book is, the, the this boat is known as Dodge of Taurus, which is a nod to um, John Carter, Warlord of Mars. Yeah, that's a nice little Easter egg that uh, Chris Claremont put in. Yeah. Um... Or at least the artist did, yeah, because uh, Marvel had the license to publish. Oh, I'm trying to get a good image of this one. There we go. Yeah. Um, he puts that there because, well, the X-Men had uh, the rights to publish uh, John Carter, World of Mars, so he put that there as an Easter egg. And, of course, it's the guy who's driving, who's, who's basically operating this boat with, uh, looked like Xavier. Uh, he makes a reference to what happens in the pages, uh, have a pages of Hulk, something called Project Starcore. Mm -hmm. And they're just there going fishing. Yep, they're just fishing. And then the Sentinels attack them. Of course, Xavier blasts them back and they have to get away before they come back. And of course, he's seeing images of Leandra. He doesn't know it yet, but yeah, but that's Leandra. You don't see what she looks like. Keep it in the helmet. She doesn't sit up a little bit later. So, um, yeah, the bulk is destroyed by a sentinel because I was looking for Xavier. And it's like, Dr. Lang, yeah, you have to shut down the sentinels. Time being. Because somehow, uh, because of solar radiation storms. Yeah, and of course, Wolverine is just strapped to a board. Wearing, basically, he's shirtless. Of course, he, he probably thinks, oh yeah, Jean Grey probably enjoys this too. So, apparently, off-panel, the Sentinels captured Banshee, Wolverine, and Jean Grey, and uh, Xavier. And, of course, Stephen Lang is acting like the bigot he is. Like, uh, where is your swastika, Lang? You don't go without it. I don't not see Miss Grey. Duty. I'm surprised he doesn't poke fun of the fact that he could just poke a fit thing. He could just wiggle her toes. Yeah, that's a good thing. He uses his hand to himself, unlike uh, a certain person in present day who um, did it in pages of all new X-Men, where there was a woman who was so close, her hands were so close to, to teenage Jean Grey that she could easily rip off her clothes if she wanted to. But this, yeah, I'm kind of glad the fact David Crocker drew the fact he has hands folded. Despite the fact he could be close to stripper Brett naked, but he's not going to do that. Nope, he's not going to do that. Despite the fact, like Marmar Taggart, yeah, Jean Grey is one of those women where any man wants to bang her, despite the fact she's taken. Yeah. Yeah, and of course she gets hit, and of course Steven slaps her, and Wolverine gets ticked off, and he starts attacking Stephen Lang's thugs, and of course sent Sentinel after them, and of course Sentinel gets whacked by um, uh, Wolverine. Yeah, he, of course, he breaks out. He's got healing factors, so, so what? And, of course, the X-Men put on their costumes again. Of course, Jean Grey also already wearing a dress at that point. What's she doing, Ray? I'm going to try and tear out my dress. It's even kind of what's time for a fight. 
at all. Ain't no trouble, Ray. It is. Hey, not so blasted short. Thank you very much, I think. And he died red. <laughs> it's so funny. Yeah, Wolverine really wanted to do that. Because any any reader of the X-Men knows Wolverine seriously wants to bang Jean Grey. Yeah, he does because he's in love with her. Basically, Jean Grey is the subject of a love triangle which lasts even after his even after her death, she's still stuck in a love triangle. Yeah, they're arguing like what well, that one Charles Xavier, then a sentinel attacks, then bam, she takes it out. And of course another another sentinel show up. And well more of them anyways. And and of course uh Gene Banshee and Wolverine go slicing and dicing on the Sentinels. And of course they pretty much destroy all of them. Yep. Yeah, all the X Men uh well th these three destroy them all and of course uh Cyclops and Nightcrawler are wondering where the heck are the other X Men? Yeah, because they're off planet. So they decided to try to, uh, well, apparently that somebody had come through the thing. Somebody had come to the, back to the Xavier Institute over the wall. And it's just, uh, Dr. Peter Corbrew, an old friend of Fester's. Yep, and they decided to go to space. Yeah, at this point they decided to go to space to do whatever. And cut away to issue uh, 98, where you, you still have the, the three X. Uh, you have Jean Grey, Banshee, Wolverine, basically floating in space, and somehow they get back to uh, they, they get put in spears and taken back to the space station. And Wolverine is like, yeah, I want to kill this guy so badly because how much of he can't stand bigots. He really wants to kill this guy so badly. And of course, apparently some uprising stuff going on. Apparently mutants are getting attacked. So we got a new wave. Oh yeah, look, Judge Claimers. Well, apparently... Um, it's mentioned here that apparently Judge Claimers actually died off panel, and he he made his first appearance during that uh, Roy Thomas storyline, which brought back the Sentinels. And of course, some of the X and of course the X Men said, and of course we cut away to the X Men going to space in the space shuttle. Excuse me. And of course, uh, uh, Colossus having daydreams of what happened to his brother Mikel. Apparently something bad happened. To him. Apparently he destroys a spacesuit. So anybody who knows Power Rangers space, like singing song like Rangers in space, or putting this for this like X Men in space going up in the space shuttle. Yeah, Deja Vu of uh, Chase of Space Part Two. Yeah, for me anyways, it has flash. It had it Deja Vu of that. And of course, um, yeah, all the thing about solar radiation. And of course, covered this post office where apparently uh, Sean Cassidy had been asked to deliver a, a let, like there's a letter delivered to him without delay. That's just what happened afterwards. And of course, uh, the guy delivering the letter basically gets zapped by somebody who gets superiors the next next storyline after this one. So uh, Stephen Lang attacks the space shuttle, which is about to dock. Yeah, sanctuary. Press sanctuary. Says sanctuary denied. So he destroys the shuttlecraft, but everybody gets launched into space. And yeah, so the so the X Men are on board the shuttle, gets launched into space. Fight the Sentinels, and they get on the station. Fight more Sentinels, fighting, fighting, fighting. Just continue fighting. Like everyone's happy each other alive. Hooray! Of course, he hears Jean Grey, and and it's like, oh yeah, Trask knows. And of course, uh, Trask gets uh, Steve Lang gets taken out by Cyclops. So the person is Anthony me, Lang. And the issue ends with the most shocking cliffhanger of all. The Modern day X Men versus the original X Men. 
where Xavier's telling them to kill the imposters. And we come to the most homage cover in the history of Marvel Comics. Come to the issue where it's been homage. The cover's been homage hundreds of times over the years. A Kenny X-Men number 100. Where it's been homage for, I think it was like uh, Kenny X-Men 141. Uh, there's an issue of, of Science First, X-Force, uh, and Kenny X-Force Volume 2 did it. Uh, Thunderbolts did it twice. But this cover has been spoofed and homage over the years. Heck, uh, Green Hornet's done it. Uh, there's a cover for, uh, what's the cover of that series? Oh, yes. Uh, Justice League Quarterly has homage this cover. This cover is um, one of the most spoofed covers in the history of comic books. Yeah. Guess it's it's a, it's a great cover. Heck, this this cover was even homage for issue 100 of Defenders. Yeah, look at this cover. If you look at this cover for like I, I'm trying to look up I was trying to look up a list of covers that homage is very cover, but but yeah, the list is super long. There's even an issue of uh of Secret Invasion um Frontline where homage is this cover, and also uh, Wolverine Origins. Yeah. Bunch of times this cover has been homaged. Yep. So the uh, the uh, and then we have well I also point out that well prior to this the uh, Bill Mitchell had already left the book so yeah quick comments on his own no change. So yeah the X Men fight their well the the X Men that Chris Claremont assembled fight the so called original X Men that they revealed to be androids. And they go out fighting, 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 more fighting. Yeah, and I think, and all of a sudden we see Charles the Giver standing up. Of course, at this point, this is before he, uh, this is before M Day, so basically the the X Men machine said that he's just a robot. Yep. Yeah, it's revealed that all the other X Men are that were attacking the current day X Men were just robots. That ain't us. Yeah, Wolverine can smell it. How could this be? Yeah, look at this splash page of, of Scott Lang acting like a typical uh sickness man like no 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 like he's like Superboy Prime before Superman Prime went nuts. It's like no 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 Yeah. Yeah that does that remind you of any supervillains like getting angry because their plans don't work? Yep. Typical villains. And of course Everett gets a uh, free by Cyclops. And of course uh Steve Lane tries to get away in his shuttlecraft. Well his his vehicle anyways. He tries to get away and of course this place starts blowing up and they decide to uh, get out of there quickly. So there's a... Uh, uh, yeah, basically because he's injured, can't fly. So he can't fly so he, so he tries to read his mind, absorb all his, all his knowledge about flying a, a craft, and of course he knocks out uh, Cyclops. He's taken to a life cell. Yeah, and of course she doesn't like, he he doesn't like, she loves to be called Jeannie. Her name is Jean. And of course they all get out and of course everyone says goodbye to her and she steals up the craft and tries to uh um go to the sun. Trying to get all the radiation out of there. And then the issue ends right there. So what did I think of uh those three issues. Awesome. Now I have to turn to the set. I know Thovic says to be concluded. But I guess, kind of remember I'm majority of this little storyline here. Which kind of also leads himself to the next storyline. Dealing with uh, the Shi'ar. Which I'll do in probably the next, next few episodes. I'll talk about the Shi'ar. But these three issues were great. Uh, I give them a 9.5 out of 10. It's great. And plus you also got to love the, um, homage, the issue 100 homage covers. Yep. So, uh, that's it for this episode. Stay tuned for the next episode, which should be, uh, episode 39. I'm going to cover issues 101 to 103. Okay? But until then, I will see you there.
Bye.